Good afternoon. Welcome back from lunch and uh, good morning to some of our speakers and uh, organizers. So what we have today, yeah. Yeah, so what we have today are four speakers, and we're going to kick off with a gentleman called Raphael Marins, who's Principal Product Manager at Red Hat. And Raphael's responsible for uh, Principal uh, Technical Marketing for Financial Services. So he has uh, considerable experience uh, with 22 years, and the current focus is on large enterprises uh, and particular banks. So what I'll do without any further delay is, is hand it over to Raphael, and we, we get to hear what he has to say. Thank you, Raphael. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. And hi, everyone. Uh, so thank you for taking your time and, and welcome to API Days. Welcome back to API Days Singapore. So in this session, I cover today a cloud native approach to open APIs in financial services, which is becoming increasingly important to embrace digital ecosystems, right? So. Uh, my name is Rafael Marins. I'm currently based in Brazil and work for Red Hat and, and, and in the financial services business unit. So let's get started. And uh, a couple of high level points as we go through this, uh, and we will have a few minutes in the end for QA. Today, Red Hat is uniquely positioned in the market with open source technologies to offer a bridge from where customers are at now to the new, to the future, and to what they are trying to get. And taking these existing business capabilities embedded in a myriad of heritage systems and modernize them, uh, move them to new technology, move to new platforms at their place, at their own pace and with the, the skills they have and with the timeline that fits to their business needs. And as as well as moving the architectures of applications forward and improving developer productivity. So taking advantage of the industry best practices in terms of software development and infrastructure operations to get where they are now and to get to a better future state. So before talking about technology, I think it's crucial to recognize what is behind this and what are the market forces in financial services that drive a new, this new type of approach, right? So with customer expectations at, at uh, all, all time height in, in fintechs, firms waiting in the wings to stake their claim on the market share, banks must rededicate themselves to understand their customers on an intuitive level and delighting them at every opportunity. And I thought technology can help achieve these goals without solid, without a solid uh, customer centricity, uh, uh, customer centric in strategy to act on, on, on its little more expensive window dressing. So a few years ago, a company that was not was the center of the universe and the customer was around it. So accessing the different offers that, that this business has to offer and what we saw was a radical and healthy and satisfactory and impressive and vital change and a change that, that is in the mindset and to understand that the customer is the center of, of this, the, the, the universe now, and our companies float orbit around the customers. So this is all about customer centricity. Uh, recently said by a chairman and CEO of Banco Bradesco uh, and, and large bank in Brazil. And in summary, this is about digi the digitalization of financial services. Uh, and how should focus on turning customer journey into something personal rather than a utility, right? And financial services should work seamless as part of the life cycle of transaction. It should be an end-to-end journey from transacting on mobile devices to understand your financial status 
through self-services analytics tools and to interact with uh, financial consultants, for instance. So moving, and, and the open APIs in banking has become a global phenomenon from the marketing perspective. And, and the technolo technology community is already in and are, are, they are ready to innovate with APIs, microservices, containers, and DevOps. But what constitutes cloud native is still way too advanced for most of institutions and vendor platforms. So what is behind your APIs is really what matters. And software architectures are becoming a very important input into continuously executing and refining your open API strategy through, through, through to your business. So at Prehat, we are helping companies pushing the boundaries of the tradi traditional banking services. Uh, these are uh, a, a set of common user cases that our customers are working on and looking using the, the Red Hat and open source technologies to transform the business to achieve this new uh, uh, and provide this new use case kind of use case. And what about competition? So banks are starting to experiment with the platform business model, uh, product offerings and added value mixing with the distribution channels in the network model, in the mesh model, and, and also about disintermediation, the new customer experiences and, and innovation disruption. So uh, this is where the benefits are for most of our customers working through this journey to provide better experiences or lower costs and have a broader customer base by mixing with distribution channels or just making better decisions by automating their, their, their smart and intelligent applications using cognitive technologies. So as a cloud native approach, basically for role 50 years or more, mankind wrote applications in some variant of monolith architecture, right? So including me and probably many of you, whether it was client server, mainframe, three-tier, pipeline processing or something else, we had services that did different jobs but were similar to each other in terms of environments and language. And they often shared a common business tier and a common data format. And in the last 10 years, we moved from this old world into a new model with cloud native microservices. And in this new world, services are developed by smaller focused teams with minimal dependencies between teams and the proverbial two pizza teams, right? This approach emphasizes the frameworks, the sprints, hybrid cloud deployments, continuous integration, and many other innovations that were relevant or available by, to, the, to the monolithic developers. So new development practices required also new mental models. And in our mental models at Red Hat, we address microservices architecture from uh, four aspects. Uh, it's clear that well-defined APIs contracts are the best approach for synchronous application level integration uh, interaction <coughs> between services and with the outside world, world uh, by using CQRS uh, and, and, and other patterns, but also a multiple state and value of a particular entity by using events which occur during some operation among services or as each microservice owns its own data model, there is, has to be a strategy for uh, using and uh, unlocking this data and providing this access to this data uh, through many other gateways in a manner that allow queries and updates from the other services to and from the outside world. And also the business logic often requires multi-step process uh, with halting and transformation across services. And that's where the enterprise integration patterns comes in. Uh, 
and an approach to building and running applications that exploit the advantage of cloud computing. Uh, to be cloud native, solutions must be broken into these functional blocks and run as microservices within, within containers on an elastic infrastructure using agile process and a continuous delivery of workflows. And containerized cloud, cloud native applications are bundled with all the related configuration files, libraries, dependencies required to run and, and, and run efficiently and reliably uh, in different computing environments. So containers isolate application and its dependencies into self-contained unit that can run anywhere. So some key attributes of cloud native applications are to be packaged as lightweight containers, be developed with the best of breed language and frameworks, so you are polyglot. Uh, third, design with loosely coupled microservices, have this loosely couple in mind. Fourth, centered around APIs for interactions and collaboration architected and many others uh, attributes that we can talk about. But not everything you can take and run on cloud is cloud native, right? So at Red Hat, we use different strategies to help banks to make or transform their into cloud native applications and services running all kinds of environments to support digital channels. And more than just move to the cloud, containers are, aren't, aren't enough, right? So relying solely on vendor specific cloud APIs make us only native to that cloud. That's not work correct. Not just technology, but also people process uh, need equal attention. So basically, cloud native applications should expect and tolerate infrastructure failure and expect infrastructure complexity to be, be abstracted and operate across a distributed architecture, availability zones, and cloud providers, and be resilient and secure, observable. And we talk about this into this. Uh, next slide. So most leading banks are planning or investing to uh, composable architectures. But here we can see common patterns used across the industry to call out the picture from the reality check, remember? So how can you expect developers affiliated with your business in the digital ecosystem to provide better customer experiences if you have poor API experience at your door, right? So at interest with a monolith, for instance, uh, you have a re reliable, secure call stack of, my, of a function where the application calls that function and everything works. And when you move from monolith applications to microservices, you are trading the reliability of security call stack for the unreliability of uh, an unsecure, insecure uh, network. So microservices are made of microservices that depends on other microservices. And it's also an evolution of typical integration styles and architecture, architectural uh, evolution. So now you have to deal with this service side and deal with security, retries, logging, tracing, halting, and this, this is all uh, not a new issue, obviously, but with, uh, with the other technologies in the past, you have to deal with that as well. But when you multiply the number of services by hundreds of microservices, and you try to hand code this, this, these controls, it's, it doesn't scale, right? So with these different services, trying to connect them, uh, one approach would be without the service mesh, hand code some kind of security authorization uh, and add some, which adds some, some overhead or any other, many other uh, kind of approach. So architecture evolution is a necessity to open APIs. And looking at the journey of how applications have been designed and deployed can help us to understand why serverless has become a topic of discussion.
And in the move to the cloud, the objective of being portable drives decisions. And the smaller the code base or this, the more portable and scalable each process can become, so it drives functions as a service to be smallest and lightest amount of code to, to ship into production. So there are many characteristics, but what is can be important as part of this is uh, it's, uh, that Red Hat is working actively in the community. Uh, uh, more recently, is Quarkus, and Quarkus means uh, a tiny particle that makes protons and neutrons. But also, uh, Quarkus uh, Kubernetes native native Java framework tailored for Graal VM and Hotspot, and Prefet from best of breed Java libraries and standards. So the goal of Quarkus is to make Java the leading runtime in the Kubernetes and serverless environments. So while offering developers a unified reactive and imperative programming model to optimally uh, address an, a wide range of distributed application architectures. So, uh, Quarkus nat native binaries are, are extremely resource efficient, stating, starting, uh, starting up fast and taking up a very little memory. So this is this makes it very well suited to many use cases where traditional Java applications have struggled, but uh, also such as serverless or even driven environments and architectures or applications where process isolations and density are super important, like scalable uh, microservice architectures. So to the final considerations, um, Red Hat open source a uh, technology stack that provides the full API lifecycle management. And I keep it here just for your reference. And the full lifecycle API manages just the basis of any an effective API strategy, right? So Red Hat advocates on the API contract first, but also it involves consulting with the stakeholders to collaboratively design the API before determining or developing various channels and applications that will use this API. And also Red Hat has developed and made available the FSI Open API Sandbox, an open source toolkit to accelerate the mock-up and experimentation of open API's lifecycle. So you can use this for your own development or proof of concept package with a set of open API standards out of the box. So also containers can simplify application and API, API deployment uh, and portability across platforms. And this eliminates the need to refactor services to lock them on different infrastructure and make your environment more efficient. So in this open API platform, Red Hat OpenShift serves as the underlying container application platform and three scale API management, Red Hat Fuse and Red Hat Single Saigon and the other tooling uh, and application services that runs in containers on top of OpenShift. And this is also to keep uh, uh, Keep here for, for your reference, but this is a full outreach for uh, cloud native approach in terms of uh, policy extensions and what is, what is important in terms of architecture challenges and perspective. But no matter what and where you choose to deploy, you have to you have a consistent you have to to have a, a consistent platform where. Uh, for your bank and, and the tools to get the speed and productivity benefits you can expect from a modern cloud platform. So we are happy to talk more in detail on the architecture and the technology, technology that supports it. So on the next session, we'll be providing a workshop uh, on protect, protecting and securing uh, core banking APIs uh, at two, uh, two at 10 this afternoon. And when we hear about cloud native, we often think about cloud computing and innovation. 
And this is, these innovations is baked into every layer of OpenShift and the platform of running hybrid, a platform for running hybrid cloud solutions and environments. So this is my, uh, completes my talk. Uh, we have a few minutes left for, for questions and please uh, feel free to reach out to me and, my, and other Red Hat specialists at our booth uh, at this API Days live conference. And I think that we're saying that uh, sure, Raphael, thank you. Yeah. Thank um, you, so I think what we've got now, we've, we've got about five minutes. Um, to interact with uh, Raphael, myself, please put your questions in the hop in chat for this session. All right, then we can address them. Um, at the moment, taking a look, no questions. Um, also, I can see some useful places where you can go. Red Hat have a have a booth in the partner uh, area on Hopin. Um, and yep. And also, what sounded quite interesting, Raphael, was the sandbox environment. And I thought maybe to clarify that, there's a lot of tooling here, and there's a lot of services that can take the architectural evolution. Right. That's my impression. Exactly. Right. How much of that is available through the sandbox and can anyone access it? Yeah, all of them are available on, a, on top of OpenShift. Uh, so based on OpenShift, you have the ability to uh, self-provision the many of these cloud services that you want by using operators. But out of the box, by using this uh, sandbox, you get a press pre-configured environment using uh, the security layer, single sign-on, so uh, and the API manager, the mocking server, API mocking server, so you can mock and easily deliver APIs uh, at the beginning of your cycle. So this is all pre-configured. We've also uh, standard open banking standard APIs from from the UK standard. So it comes out with a set of APIs pre-configured that you can facilitate the, the development uh, of solutions for open banking. Yeah, I mean, the impression I got from this was the, the enablement of the interoperability of the open APIs. Um, I'm just wondering, in your experience, could you give an example of, of a customer and, and where they started from and where they've, they've gone to? Because really the question is, how many are using serverless? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, in yeah. fact, how many how many have moved from OpenShift to Docker to Kubernetes, right? <laughs> so perhaps you could give some perspective on that. We have a couple of yeah. minutes. Yeah. So when serverless is really evolving and, and and getting more mature, so going to enterprise with serverless it means that you need to provide the same kind of support, traceability, and 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 logins for your functions and services, right? So uh, Red Hat is actually working with multiple customers and, and including leading banks on migrating existing applications and also creating a cloud native applications and services by using functions, especially on the integration side where it, it, it makes a lot of sense for you to preserve uh, resources uh, and become more efficient in terms of resource management uh, by using serverless. But there is uh, a, a, new, a, a long role in terms of maturity and, and adoption in the enterprise. And Red Hat is doing the best to provide this enterprise support in terms of serverless but on top of OpenShift uh, using key native and, and, and other tools. Yeah, well, it certainly seems that Red Hat and the tooling and the enablement of the development community are, are getting ready for what's next. A lot of mention of efficiency and scaling up. Let me just check the chat window. Other than that, we've we've sort of finished um, finished this session. So, hey, look, I'm sure there's a lot more you could say. I'm very curious on what what what, what financial institutions are are using these tools. I'm uh, pretty sure I could imagine some names. And I guess to find out more is to to come to the partner booth, which will be open after this session. Yeah, thank you very okay, much. So thanks very, 
very much, Raphael, and I hope you get get some rest now because I know it's very late for you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you.